before I start, is anybody in the audience an ape? Yep, yep. Uh, I estimate my audience is 99.7% uh, apes. There's a few cats and dogs out there, but without upgrades, none of you are in any trouble. Now, before the rest of you get all worked up and start using your opposable thumbs to write angry YouTube comments, l l let me explain a couple things. First of all, like any rational person, I, I don't read YouTube comments. And second of all, calling you apes is not an insult. Uh, I'll make it nice and clear when I'm insulting you so you don't miss it. No, calling you apes is more a matter of scientific fact. If you went to school, uh, maybe they taught you how living things are classified. That's called taxonomy. Well, here's yours. Kingdom of animals, phylum of chordates, uh, specifically subphylum vertebrata, that's vertebrates, anything with a backbone, which some humans do have. Now that was an insult. Class of mammalia, that's mammals, uh, warm blood, live birth, Order of primates, which includes stuff like uh, spider monkeys and lemurs. Family hominidae, which is the great apes, includes chimps, bonobos, gorillas. And genus homo, which is the humans only club. It used to include Neanderthals and Homo erectus and some others, none of which have been seen around lately. Just species sapiens, which means wise a label we uh, modestly and mostly inaccurately applied to ourselves because it's our own damn classification system. So you, your animals, your mammals, and your apes. But, but, but hey, you're great apes. You know, go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Because you can do that. Also, most mammals can't do this. That's neat. I've seen some other versions of Earth where uh, people are evolved from insects and stuff. A and where everyone's a fascist. So, you know, count your blessings. Here, only some of us are. I I'm just pointing this out because if we want to call ourselves wise men, uh, we should remember that a big part of wisdom is having a sense of perspective. And from the perspective of our closest cousins, the chimps, we're the apes with some serious hair loss. Never forget, we are real close to the primates and zoos who fling dung. Try to retain a smidge of humility there. What I mostly see instead is a lot of people thinking they know more than they do. I mean, come on, the earth is round. That's not in question. The ancient Greeks figured that out centuries before we started building rockets and getting up really high and seeing it ourselves. Uh, a bunch of people have flown around it. Uh, there's satellites up there going around it. The moon's been up there forever doing its thing. Now you want to start saying that the Earth is flat? How's that happen? The, our eight brains are pretty big, but uh, they didn't evolve to figure out what's true. They evolved to keep us alive. And they make mistakes all the time. Hell, I've made a few. I'm big enough to admit that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had to erase my grandson's memory so often. We evolved in a world without cars and buildings and stuff. What? What? What was useful to know? How, how not to freeze to death? That's what. Or die of dehydration? How to find something to eat? How not to get eaten? Tigers find humans pretty tasty. Uh, so to avoid getting eaten so much, we had to make some quick decisions. We had to learn fast. So our brains take these shortcuts and that leads to certain types of errors that we make over and over. That's called a cognitive bias. It's like optical illusions. Those are mistakes that your brain makes when you see stuff. These are mistakes in your reasoning ability. Dozens of flavors of cognitive bias have been identified and <coughs> errors we make consistently. Like confirmation bias. This is a big one. You jump to the wrong conclusion and whoops, suddenly you become Einstein at remembering examples that confirm your belief 
and an idiot about noticing any examples that contradict it. This reinforces stereotypes, and that's, that's easily half of what people do that make them disgusting. The misinformation effect. That's, that's another one. You may think you remember how something happened, but people easily revise their memories based on what they heard about it afterwards. Don't let other people tell you what happened when you were there. Loss aversion. My God, this is dumb. Suppose I offer my grandson 10 bucks if he does a good job cleaning the toilet. That might motivate him, but, but if I give him the 10 bucks and then tell him I'll take it back if he does a bad job cleaning the toilet, they'll be more motivated. In the end, it's the same thing, but we fight harder to avoid losing something than we would to gain the same thing. Why? Because we're stupid apes. Haven't you been listening? The illusory truth effect. That, that's also the worst. If you hear something repeated over and over again, it starts to sound more reasonable simply because it's familiar. You, you, you've got to choose your news source the way you choose your brain surgeon. You don't want some sleazy pundit who, who doesn't care what's true or not because he gets paid either way as long as you listen to one of the crap he spews on a show to mess with your brain. That, that's just a few bias flavors. There's lots more. And the cherry on the top of this crap Sunday is bias blind spot. So if you're sitting there thinking, I can easily believe that all these other dopes suffer from every one of these, but I'm above all that, I'm always rational, then you're suffering from bias blind spot. So what do you do, huh? Someone tells you the earth is flat, do you just give up and believe them? Or do you believe nothing you don't see for yourself? No. No, see, we have a system for that. It's called the scientific method. Do, do, do you think scientists just, just uh, pluck the truth out of the air? You think they wave their hands like it's a magic spell? Spells are stupid. No, it's hard work. That's what science is. It takes years. And along the way, scientists make mistakes all the time. Why? Because they're apes. No smarter than the rest of us, mostly. They just try harder. The whole point of the scientific method is to try to find real truth using ape brains, fallible ape brains. Scientists design an experiment. They test something to see what happens. Maybe they have a guess what will happen, but they try not to focus too hard on that because of confirmation bias. And then they try really hard to prove themselves wrong. They try to think of any other explanation they can for the result they got. Then they publish what they did, all their data, all their conclusions, their line of reasoning, their whole procedure, and then they invite other ape scientists to try it for themselves. Before it's considered real, it's got to be repeated by someone else. So what if somebody tells you they've discovered something amazing, but they won't show you the data, huh? They won't show you their research? It's a big old red flag. They're probably not doing science. And what if you can't design an experiment to prove it? Like, what if you want to know if apes have souls? You can't design a test for that? It's not verifiable. That means it's not falsifiable. If you can't figure out any way to prove it false, then <laughs> ain't science. Believe whatever you like. W one more thing you should be aware of. There's this thing called burden of proof. Once there's a scientific consensus, if you want to disagree, the burden is on you, bub. That means you don't get to waste my time asking me why the horizon looks flat. Like you think this somehow wins you points in an argument. If I had to answer every stupid question, I, 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 I wouldn't get anything else done. You can't be bothered to learn what the scientists believe and, and why they do, then nobody wants to hear your stupid theories. The sleazy pundits like to do that too. They pretend they're just asking questions, when really it's a lazy way to put ideas in your head and avoid being liable for it. Here's just a question. Is this because all Democrats are lizard people? Maybe you've heard that there's no such thing as a stupid question. 
and you heard wrong. Uh, someone asks you a question like that, you can just shout no at your TV screen, then change the channel and, 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 and never watch that show again. See, see I, see, I just saved you wasting years of your life. Hmm, that, that time when I made the dog smarter. Maybe I was onto something. I, I could make a helmet like that for the humans. Real homo sapiens. I think I'd rather watch some interdimensional cable. <laughs>